Hey, hey guys, this is TechX, and today we'll be showing you this something that's made in China, but is not as poor quality as something like this, the MJX Bugs controller. So stay tuned to figure out what it is. All right, y'all. So this, just to give you a heads up, was provided courtesy of UAV Futures. I did win it in a uh, in a contest, but still, um, thank, shout out to UAV Futures. Uh, link in the description to his channel. He's got tons of cool racing videos, tons of um, dr drone racing videos, tons of um, DIY builds, tons of reviews, all sorts of UAV featured videos. So. Um, digging into this, this is probably, if you guys have probably seen the um, other videos on this, but this is the Tyrannus x Lite controller. So most people are used to a controller, uh, again, just like the MJX Bugs, uh, especially if you're just kind of getting into the hobby. Um, you're, you're used to more of like a square controller. Um, maybe not this quality, maybe you have the Tyrannus like QX7 or um, like a Spectrum um, controller, but... Um, this is actually, this is, again, made for thumbers. This is not made for, um, I get it, pinchers, I guess you would call them. There's probably to tons of names for them. But this is, this is made specifically for thumbers. So if you, if you are going to buy this and you are, and you like to pinch, then e this is not the controller for you. So go, go buy the QX7. It's a lot cheaper. Uh, not a lot cheaper. It's like 110 where this is like $10 more. Um, but digging into it, uh, as with almost all of the FR Sky or Free Sky, whatever you want to call it, controllers, you do get a really, really nice case. So this is the nice case. It comes just in the box. At least this one just came right in the box like that. Um, there were some papers and stuff at the bottom. Um, uh, this is a super nice case. Hard. It's kind of like a GoPro case, uh, if y'all, if y'all know what that is. Not, not the GoPro, but... Um, just their their types of cases. Um, this zipper along the front, and it opens up, and there's and there's foam padding and stuff. You can throw that off the side. There's also this has been taken out of the wrapping, um, so just so you know, there's like normally plastic and stuff in here. You get um, your manual, but I found it's better just to watch YouTube videos to kind of figure out what what this is because I, while this is helpful, it's it's, it's not really that good. Um, you get a bunch of stickers, like thank you stickers, um, all all their logo, of course, but, you know, I don't know if you want to stick it on your drone or something. Nice gimbal protectors, and you do get a bag of, uh, I think there's heat shrink in here, and there's also the screws, which I'll get to in a second, and covers for the screws. So you may have had a another FR Sky controller or a QX7. Um, again, I don't know the older versions, uh, but this is uh, very. It's a very. It's a very high quality. I mean, you're paying 120 dollars. 120 dollars, I believe, for a transmitter. So you're getting some pretty nice quality. Um, basically, eh, sorry, a little tough to get out. Uh, you get this rubber silicon on the back. Um, it's a it's a matte gloss finish, I guess you could say. Um, we get some buttons, uh, trim adjustments, uh, menu selection, um, and then your your gimbals here. Um, power button, uh, three way switches, two three way switches right here, and then you also have um, two two way switches, and then dials. This uh, this black thing on the back here, just you can pull up, and that's for a an, an antenna. Even though this does have a, an, an internal antenna, if you connect another antenna to that to get extended range, um, it'll ask you, do you want to use the internal or external, make sure it's the right rating and everything. Not really going to get into that too much. There's a back panel on here that you can install other uh, other modules to in order to be able to communicate with, I believe, Spectrum and also Bluetooth for uh, the trainer. That panel slides back on. And the important thing is... One of the most important things when you're getting set up with this is batteries. So I, that was the biggest challenge for me was getting batteries. And that's where I end up picking up these 
EBL lithium ion batteries. One of the biggest things is when you're picking out these batteries is people end up buying the um, 18600 or 18650s I believe and those won't fit in this controller. You need to get the um, 18500s like uh, I'll leave a link in the description to this to this battery um, to these batteries but I found these the two batteries which you need um, for the controller with, along with this charger here uh, for 15 bucks on Amazon so that was that was a pretty good deal this also charges 18650s as well and I uh, if there's any bigger batteries out there that should charge us as well they just slip right in and it's pretty good pretty good deal charges it well I haven't had any problems and these are rec these are the batteries that have been recommended to me by other by other more uh, involved involved uh, RCists I guess you could say um, you also get a micro USB to USB cord again this does not these batteries do not come with the transmitter just so you know you have to buy them separately so you have a hundred and twenty dollar transmitter and another fifteen bucks for batteries you can buy another four pack of batteries I believe for another fifteen twenty bucks so that's that's something to keep in mind um, I'm sure there's other options out there but this was the quickest uh, best uh, the customer service was great with EBL so to install the batteries you just pull the transmitter we'll first take the transmitter out of the case and then these little end caps off twist off here twist them away from the center and then they just pop off the positive end goes in so that's the non stripe side and then twist back on And then you can power it up. So, just looking at some of the some of the the uh, ports that you have back here, you have uh, the headset port. You have a micro uh, micro SD, a micro USB, and then this is to connect servos. Uh, so you can program right off of the controller. Um, and I'll show you guys in a little bit. I don't have a drone to hook this up to yet, but I will be hooking this up to a simulator so you can see what how how it feels and um, just how it performs. So I have an already installed, um, already all the voices and stuff installed on a micro SD card. Uh, you can look that up on other YouTube videos, and I'll link that. I'll link another video to that in the description on how to install those. I also have the files and everything for you to download in the description. Um, but as soon as you put the batteries in, you can press. You hold and press the power button, and it turns on. there's the screen again this is the menu selector and the uh, other selection buttons trim buttons gimbals switches um, but before you get in really into this you might you're probably gonna want to adjust your um, your throttle stick so that doesn't center in this in the middle of the controller all the time um, like I like to have my throttle on the left other people people might like to have their throttle on the right to do that you just have to flip it over once we turn it off just flip it over and then you actually have screw ports here so they come with the, the um, screws are not installed already so all you have to do is you um, you can either put the, the two screws in this side already or you can do to adjust for your throttle so the longer screw I believe goes on the inside here and then the shorter screw goes on the outside and basically all you have to do is with a hex key or excuse me an allen wrench um, just twist it until you get to the you have to twist it in uh, a fair way so that um, so that this no longer becomes centered and it stays in the position when you push it up or down um, so that's just takes that takes a little bit of playing playing around with um, so you can get used to it and then you can also tighten these the screws up so that this is a little bit tighter tighter a little bit looser when you when you move it around and again that's just a little bit of playing around with um, so the the things that you have to pull off the screw covers are right in here They're this bag um, It looks like this little flowery thing But the longer ones actually go the longer ones go on the outside All right, so that's basically the setup of the controller um, 
to insert the SD card, you just got to put it in here. Make sure you don't put it upwards because there's another space up there. You want to slide it in all the way across uh, right at the bottom. Otherwise, it's not going to go in. Again, you don't need to have the SD card inserted if you don't want to have voices. But in order to update the firmware and stuff, that is sort of necessary. So to to turn it on, just press the just long hold the the power button until it turns on. And the voices definitely Welcome make a difference. Switch warning. So, because I don't have any of the switches set or the fail-safes, it's not going to, it's not, it's not going to, it's, it, normally if you have it all set up properly, it doesn't, or, and bound, it doesn't have these things unless there's an actual problem with it. So, let's zoom into the menu and uh, show you guys how to operate a little bit better. So, one thing you do want to remember um, is this is your, this is your, um, to op move around the menu, uh, this is your select, and this is also your menu back button. So when it goes, when it falls into sleep, um, it just it it's still in operation mode. It's just uh, you have there's no light, so all you have to do is just flick us uh, flick a gimbal or something, and it should come back on. So I've got my voltage right here. You can see me moving the sticks around right now on here. You get here's your trim right here, and you can adjust your trim. By pressing up or pressing down. Trim center. So yeah, it'll Trim let me center. know. It'll let me know with the voices again. That doesn't. If you don't download the firmware and the voices, that won't. It won't tell you that. So that's something else you do have to do. So now I've got it. I'm just gonna put the stick back down. Um, so to go to, let's let's say to go set up the time and date and everything, we have to use this this um, joystick here. I'm just going to push to the left. Now we have the radio set up. There's also nine pages, which we'll go through in a second. You can see the time, the date, set all that uh, volume and everything by just pressing down. It'll go through all the menu, everything. And that's something you can go through and take a look at, especially as you get more used to your controller. So to switch to the pages, make sure you're on the one out of nine, or whatever it is, whatever page you're on. And then just going to scroll left or right. So now we can see what's on the SD card. We can have the, see the global functions, trainer. Um, there's more information on that uh, later. Uh, you can also take a look at it on YouTube. But that's basically just able to connect up to another controller using the module on the back. So just going to switch over again. So we have the version. You have your firmware version, dates, um, and all that. Now, at page 8 of 9, we have switches and then analogs on 7 of 9, 8 of 9, sorry, is hardware, and then 9 of 9 is the stick calibration. And then we're back to the menu, or back to the radio setup. So, to go back to the menu, just press the bottom button down here, and you're back to the menu. So, you go back to the, see where your sticks are, just press the right one time, and then... Um, again, this this can change. This will change based upon what you have programmed in your controller. So let's take it down to the flight simulator and take a look. Okay, so one of the first most important things is to power on your controller um, and plug it in before you start the before you start the simulation. So just going to press the power button, turn it on. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. All right, so then we just plug in the U micro USB right into the bottom of the controller or the side, whatever you want to call it. And then you're going to get this prompt that says, do you want to use the USB joystick or for storage? And we're going to select joystick. There's going to be a full tutorial on how to use FPV Air 2 later, coming out later, but this is just a quick uh, demonstration of how the controller works. So just open up FPV Air 2. We have to go into input, select Tyrannus, got it, calibrate ranges, so there we go, we can calibrate the ranges, done. Alright, now save and exit. So don't judge me too much, I'm not too used to FPV acro, um, I'm more used to a stabilized FPV flight, but um, I have been practicing on acro for a little bit. so. We're going to get started here. So let's just kind of balance, just kind of put me back into the starting position. Continue flying. All right, so 
just gonna flip over here and then you get your throttle okay so this is actually this is a lot more responsive so before I was using my I was using a um, oh I was using a an Xbox controller and that was a lot um, I don't know it just it just felt a heck of a lot different so for that I got I gotta give it I gotta give it to the control this definitely because it feels a lot more responsive uh, a lot easier to control um, so yeah obviously you can see I am not a perfect I'm not really good um, FPV flyer at all uh, I'm still kind of getting used to this and this is only like the second or third time I've used the the um, Tyrannus FR X Lite FR Sky um, so definitely it's it's something to get used to um, so there are other videos on the FPV Air too but I'm gonna be coming out with um, one hopefully soon uh, testing the multiplayer and everything um, the only problem with this is that you do have to get um, you do have to pay I think it's like five bucks there's there's been sales going on it though um, that make it a lot cheap a little bit cheaper like 50 cents cheaper so it's not a big not a huge deal